The Lord be with you. And also with you. Welcome to our worship service. This is Zion Lutheran Church at 410 Main Street South in Pine City, Minnesota. I'm Pastor Kleppe. This is the service for Sunday, October 25th. In the Lutheran Church, we always observe October 31st as Reformation Day. It is the anniversary of the day when Luther posted his 95 theses on the door of his church in Wittenberg. Uh, that was in 1517, October 31st. And so we always celebrate on the last Sunday in the month of October the Reformation and some Reformation themes, uh, such as the, the gospel and the power of the word of God and themes like that. So that's the, the theme of our service. This week we will be using Divine Service Setting 1 from the Lutheran Service Book. It's on page 151. And we're going to be singing three hymns from the Lutheran Service Book, Hymn 644, Hymn 655, and Hymn 657. We begin with Hymn 644, The Church is One Foundation.
If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Take a moment to consider your own sinfulness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins, as a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority. I therefore forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>
Our first reading for the observance of the Reformation is from Revelation chapter 14. Then I saw another angel flying directly overhead with an eternal gospel to proclaim to those who dwell on earth, to every nation and tribe and language and people. And he said with a loud voice, Fear God and give him glory, because the hour of his judgment has come. And worship him who made heaven and earth, the sea and springs of water. This is the word of the Lord. Thank Thanks be to God. God. Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth gives way, though the mountains be moved into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble at its swelling. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God will help her when morning dawns. The nations rage. The kingdoms totter. He utters his voice. The earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come behold the works of the Lord, how he has brought desolations on the earth. He makes wars cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the chariots with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress.
Our epistle lesson from Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 3. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be stopped and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For by works of the law, no human being will be justified in his sight, since through the law comes knowledge of sin. But now the righteousness of God has been manifested apart from the law, although the law and the prophets bear witness to it. The righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, and are justified by his grace as a gift. Through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a propitiation by his blood, to be received by faith. This was to show God's righteousness, because in his divine forbearance he had passed over former sins. It was to show his right righteousness at the present time, so that he might be just, and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. Then what becomes of our boasting? It is excluded. By what kind of law? By a law of works? No but by the law of faith. For we hold that one is justified by faith, apart from works of the law. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
text for our consideration today is our epistle lesson from Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 3. For we hold that one is justified by faith, apart from works of the law. About 15 years ago or so, a movie came out entitled Luther. It was about the reformer, Martin Luther, and I've watched the movie a number of times, maybe a dozen. I've shown it to confirmation classes and Bible studies. I've offered it for the congregation to come in and watch. Probably many of you have seen it as well. It's good. It's pretty historically accurate, I think. It's interesting how Luther is portrayed. Early in the movie, he appears to be tense and fearful, even bordering on crazy. But when he earns his scholar's robe as doctor of theology, he runs his class rather lightheartedly. He jokes about his own pride and his faults in the church. He has a loving and joyfully, joyful relationship with his wife. Why would Luther have this change of heart? Why would he, by his own admission, go from fear and hatred of God to a deep and profound love for God and his word? In short, the movie's portrayal of Luther affirmed what I have believed for some time, that one of the most important and influential aspects of the Reformation was the Reformation of Luther himself. He changed. And then he changed the church and the world. This is the season in the church here when we remember the Reformation. The actual day is actually Saturday, October 31st, which will be the 503rd anniversary of Luther nailing the 95 Theses to the door of the church in Wittenberg. These 95 Theses started the Reformation. They are a series of statements about sin and forgiveness. They are about being right with God. They reflect a change in Luther's thought from a time when he feared God and devoted his life to earning God's favor, which made him miserable, to a time when he was very comfortable and even happy in his relationship with God. This change came about because Luther had studied the Bible. It came about because he had learned to rightly divide the Bible, the Bible's two parts, its law and its gospel. This distinction became for the reformers and remains for us today the key to rightly understanding the scripture. The distinction of law and gospel is the theme of our gospel lesson this morning. Paul wishes to instruct the Romans and us the correct way to view and use the law of God and the gospel. First, Paul writes, the law is written for those under the law. That's us. We are the ones under the law. And being under the law is profoundly different than being above the law. Let me explain the difference. When we had a number of small children in the house, we had a rule that no one could eat or drink in the living room. But there was someone in the family who actually did eat and drink in the living room regularly. Me. But I wasn't breaking the rule because I was above it. I made the rule. It wasn't written for me. It was written for those under the law, the children. It was written so that little hands didn't spill things on the carpet or on some nice furniture. It wasn't meant for me. It wasn't meant to be a burden. The law was written for the good of our home, written for the good of our family. It was written for those under the law. The law of God is written for our good, not for God's good. It is written for those under the law, for us. Actually, the Bible indicates three reasons that God has given the law to us, three uses of the law. The first use is the curb. The law is intended to keep our behavior within certain guidelines for the good of everyone. It's the law written on our hearts. 
our conscience. Given to us who are under the law for our good. The second use of the law is as a mirror. The mirror shows us ourselves, our sinfulness. When we see ourselves in the law, we see who re we really are. We are sinners. As our text tells us, the mirror shuts our mouth. We are held accountable to God by his law. We are condemned. We are made aware of our profound sinfulness. When we seek holiness, the law is our enemy. The law reminds us of our sinfulness. Righteousness is quite the opposite of sinfulness. The law tells us that we are sinful. We stand before God condemned. But the gospel reminds us that we have the righteousness of Christ. The gospel reminds us that God became man, kept the law perfectly for us, and died on the cross for our sins. Because of what Jesus did, we have heaven. We have the ultimate righteousness of being in God's sinless home forever. The Reformation told us that the Bible was law and gospel. Keep them straight. The law condemns us. Don't try to get to heaven by keeping the law, by being obedient, by giving money, by punishing yourself. You will fail. You'll come up short. And you will end up condemned. But the gospel saves. The righteousness of Jesus is yours by faith and gives you the gift of eternal life in heaven. Earlier I talked about three uses of the law, but I actually only discussed two. The third use of the law is as a guide. The law tells us what God wants from us, what he expects from us. We obey, we serve, we witness, we minister because of what Christ has done for us, because of what he's commanded us to do. We love him because he first loved us. We serve him because he's created this beautiful world for us and filled it with abundance. We serve him because he gave his life for us. And we have the promise of eternal life because of what Jesus has done. The Reformation of Martin Luther turned him from a man who was going crazy, trying to earn his righteousness before God, into a man who knew the love of God and dedicated his life to serve him. It is the reformation that God performs in each one of us. We are born again, made new through faith in Jesus Christ, reformed from being slaves to the law to being free servants of the gospel. That's a very good thing to be, a thing worth celebrating. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and all people according to their needs. O oh, Almighty God, you have shown your faithfulness by raising up those in every generation who call your church to repentance and renewal. Continue to raise up voices in our own day who herald the truth of your word and proclaim the faith in purity and truth against all enemies. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Everlasting Father, you do not desire the death of the sinner, but want all to come to faith and life in Christ. Raise up faithful pastors who will preach your word without fail and teach the doctrine delivered to the saints, that many may hear and believe. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Merciful Lord, your word has been the light and salvation throughout the, the ages. Help us to bring your grace to those in darkness and grant them freedom through the forgiveness of their sins. Bless the missionaries serving far and near and the new congregations they establish in your name. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayers. God of power and might, you have established governments and the order of law for the protection of all people and to preserve the freedom to worship you in spirit and in truth. Grant to our president, our governor, our congress and legislature, humility and integrity, that they may enjoy true justice and the protection of life from its conception to its natural end. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Holy and gracious God, your power is revealed chiefly in showing mercy to those in need. Give to the sick healing, to the troubled peace, to the grieving comfort, and to the dying peace. We bring them before you now. According to your gracious promise, grant patience to those in tribulation and trial. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you have given great gifts to your people and provided resources to provide for their own needs and for the poor. Bless the agencies and programs of your church by which your people give aid and support those in need. Help us to provide gainful employment to all people that they may enjoy the fruits of their labors and honor you with the works of their hands. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayers. prayers. O faithful Lord, throughout the ages you spoke hope through the prophets until that day when you delivered up your own Son to be our Savior and Redeemer. Bless those who are just learning the gospel and bless us with the desire to know and keep your word. Encourage your people to avail themselves of the grace of confession and absolution that they may forgive one another and live in the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God and Father, we pray you to grant us all good things that will benefit us in body and soul, and to prevent anything harmful to us or to our salvation. Teach us to live in contentment with your will and purpose, and in the freedom you alone supply to serve you with all our heart, mind, body, and soul. All these things we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace.
Once again, thank you for joining us. This is Zion Lutheran Church in downtown Pine City, Minnesota, 410 Main Street South. If you have any questions or want to make comments on this or any of our ministries, our phone number and our website will come up on the screen in just a moment. Find hope this week in the final words of that hymn we just sang, The Kingdom Ours Remaineth. Have a great week.